Well, Islamic civilization has always been based on uh, the rejection of waste uh, as uh, an underestimation of God's blessings. So uh, in the construction of the new mosque here in Cambridge, for instance, um, we are very much at the forefront of the local uh, sort of environmental movement in that we are using the latest heat pumps, conservation technology, a sedum green roof of the building so that we'll have an almost zero carbon footprint. That's the uh, intention of creating uh, 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 one of Europe's first sort of truly ecologically responsible mosques. So that's an example of how the community is getting together to lead the way, an often recalcitrant outside community that often doesn't sufficiently understand environmental issues to show that a sacred vision of human beings and a real reverence for the sanctity of nature has to represent itself in the place where Nature meets humanity and humanity meets God, which is the place of worship where heaven meets earth and everything is reconciled. So our place of worship here in Cambridge is necessarily a showcase, not just of the beauties of Islamic art and architecture, which is all integrated natural motifs, vegetal motifs, arabesques, geometrical principles and so forth, but also, and more significantly, I think, uh, the need to act as custodians in, in creation when so much of the secular world seems to be indifferent to anything other than a dog-eat-dog -dog, uh, competitive understanding of how the economy should be and how we should engage with nature. The act of worship in Islam is precisely that reconnection of human beings to the sanctity of, of the earth. We begin in a standing position and we end in a position of prostration. Our foreheads, the symbol of our human pride, press to the earth, the clay from which we originated. Adam in the Quranic vision is created out of clay, out of earth. In our basic physicality, we are just another part of, of the physical world. But what makes us unusual is that we have this capacity to subvert the physical world far more than any other species possibly can, but we also have the capacity to make reparation and to uphold the physical world as well. So the basic Islamic understanding of the environment is not that it's a backdrop to the real drama which is human beings, but that we are part of this extraordinary cosmic symphony which is the interaction of the divine names of which we are a part. The only thing that differentiates us from the environment is that we have this custodial capacity. We can rise above our impulses which tend to be rapacious um, and turn it into the garden which it originally was, and which is a manifestation or a reminder of Eden and an anticipation of the paradise which is to come. Or we can turn it into a kind of hell, the fiery principle as opposed to the, 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 the watery principle. The fiery principle is that of anger, greed, envy, uproar, those possibilities in the human soul. So just as in the Islamic imagination we come from a garden and at the end of time there will be a garden or there will be fire, Similarly, what we do in our own souls to produce a garden in the soul or a fire of greed in the soul is going to have a knock-on effect because we are custodians in other aspects of creation. So we can turn the world into something that becomes hotter, more greedy, more competitive, more destructive, or we can turn the world into something that is calm, that is garden-like and reflects the divine purposes. For me, the, the genius of the prophetic teaching is that he was somebody who calls us back to what we are as natural human beings, not as fallen, not as intrinsically sinful, not as uh, godlike beings temporarily visiting this, this ugly and fallen world, but as part of this extraordinary panoply of the interaction of divine names and, and predicates, which is the created world.